We started to tell you his story a bit earlier, but I want to bring Roy Tilbor back. He was expected to play at the Nova Festival and survive that attack, now helping those on the front lines. He does join us live to discuss exactly what happened. Roy, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Uh, thank you so much for letting our voice be heard. Of course. So first off, I know it's it's tough. I can't even begin to imagine what you've seen. But can you break down for me what played out that day and when you realized first that it was actually an attack? Uh, more or less at uh, six in the morning, um, I heard uh, four. Um, it was a small it was the sound of a missile, but uh, I'm not in this. Uh, I'm not living in this area of Israel. I'm not used to hearing rockets over my head, and uh, I heard four missiles. I told my friends I hear something. Some of them told me that it couldn't be. Uh, probably it's fireworks, but it was sunrise. Fireworks is for the production side. It's not fireworks. Can't be. I looked at the sky. I saw. Um, four lines of smoke immediately. I don't know why my instinct hurt, hate, and I ran to the car. I took my girlfriend in the hand and let's run, running to the car. Um, luckily, I was number five or six in the line of cars that went out of the venue. Um, five cars before me or four got, uh, we got to the area of the road, which was the other um, group of terrorists that was waiting on the road, waiting for people to escape from the area and then shoot at the cars. Uh, my car didn't got shot. I turned around, uh, made a, a fast U-turn, turn, uh, running from the bullets. Um, stopping at one point because we have on the road uh, in this area of Israel we have um, a concrete uh, boxes that you can hide inside uh, I stopped there and then I saw um, four no sorry three um, Chinese workers that work on the fields in Israel uh, one of them had a gunshot uh, in the back you can easily uh, see it's a gunshot they were bleeding on the floor and we took one of them or i don't really remember the their exact situation but one of them was continuing with us to another concrete area because uh, we couldn't go inside um, i'm trying to think about it, it was so hectic um, we ran to another concrete place I think after 15 minutes, more or less, we understood it's not only missiles. It's so science fiction for us. Uh, it never happened here in Israel. Yeah, it can be a terror attacks, can be this kind of situation in small pe measures, but not nothing like that. It was too big, too strong. We didn't understand. It took us at least 15, if not 20 minutes to understand in the next concrete a um, safe place, um, then a soldier got inside with two gun wounds. And then really fast you could understand something big is going on. The soldier was super calm with a bullet in his shoulder and his back. He was very calm, talking to us, explaining what's going on, talking on the phone, explaining to his friends what's going on, from where the ter terrorists are attacking. And then it was, yeah, the movie, the horror movie started. Exactly at this point, I understood we have missile attack, we have terrorist attack, people are shooting at us. And now this is a, a, a different situation than we used to Israel, which are rockets from Gaza. And you have been helping those on the front lines ever since this all did transpire here. So what made you, what inspired you uh, to do something like that? Um, we got back from, from the area with the help of the army at six in the evening. Uh, in Israel, I, I know everybody that's coming to, to have a, a trip here to make a tourist trip 
Israel is 85, if not, if not 90 percent is heaven. And um, when we have this kind of situation in Israel, it doesn't really matter if you're in the front line or the back line, everybody's together. And we got back, we got out six in the evening from the venue at 11 and got to the place, to my home at eight in the morning, we opened. I have a bar and a restaurant place. And uh, we decided, my partners and me, uh, to open the place, Aviv, Noah and me, we are a group that in the end of the day, we all understand the situation. And I think at nine or 10, we started to work to produce food for people that you need. It doesn't really matter for us if you're a soldier or a family that can't go out of the house to buy food and we will send it. This is what's happening in Israel in the last 10 days. Everybody is helping in some way. Some people are making food. Some people are only donating money for people in need. This is the like the Israeli spirit in these kind of situations. What is the area like where you are right now on a day to day basis since the attack happened? Because you mentioned that, you know, Israel is mostly heaven most of the time, but now you have this situation. So what is daily life like for you? I know you've been very, very busy because I've been speaking with you and there's a lot going on. Um, exactly. But for me, it was from the minute I got back from the from the, this massacre, uh, I was really, I had like five, six hours in, in the night to say thank you to, to, to whatever kept me alive and well in this situation and to move on. And I didn't really concentrate about um, the sirens. So what's happening now in the middle of Israel, more to the center where, where I live, where is my, my place? Um, we have a few times a day sirens like sometimes it's uh, in one hour you have two sometimes it's in two three hours we have two free sirens we run into the shelter and then i put out all the helpers and we continue to work and produce food so the situation now is israel is totally and i'm talking israel like um, the the people that lives here now are totally concentrate about moving forward how we can survive and rise again and for rising again now we're trying to help everyone in need now people need food let's produce food if people need i'm talking about even uh, to send soldiers uh, recharges for the cell phones so we put a story instagram whatever and we we send to the people you have a lot of chargers and then we said to the bases and um, the day to day now this is what's going on you can hear kids outside like really close to their house because every like i said like every one hour or something like that you have uh, an alarm everybody's running to the shelter hopefully you will be okay and um, luckily um, the missiles 80 percent of the time doesn't hit nothing and uh, at the iron dome protects us and um, and that's it uh, more or less we are safe in this area do you see any end in sight to this anytime soon, or do you think it is just beginning? I know you're not necessarily an expert on that, but living there and experiencing this, I just want to get your opinion on that. Do you see any sort of end in sight? Um, uh, it's, uh, it's coming back to the beginning of, of our conversation. Uh, to see an end, you need to have two sides that want to speak to each other. Uh, unfortunately, um, I do not see an end. Uh, maybe it's my age, maybe it's my history in, in Israel. Um, when I saw in my eyes what happened in Saturday, the 7th to October, um, I will not put any measures about put 9-11 or maybe to go to Pearl Harbor. I, I will not do it. Uh, it's lives and I will not put on a scale what is heavy, but 1,300 got killed, we have kidnaps, we have... I don't even need to show you. It's not something I need to make a propaganda for that. It's on. It's online. They, they posted, they made a live video trying to... 
I don't even know how to say it in English, how you chop a man or baby's head. And there is online footage of that. They did things that it's un unreasonable, unhuman. I can't really explain. And if we are sitting in front of crossing the table, talking to each other, trying to understand what do you want, what, do, what we want, when some people talk to me and told me, yeah, but you are with war with another country. No, no, it's not another country. It's a terror organization. And you can see how they work. Because every time we wanted to talk, something moved. Gaza Strip was occupied by, by Israelis in 2006 or some, or five, I'm maybe mistaken of the year. We evacuate from there. And then they attack from this area. We, we made a gesture. So I'm not sure what they want. To kill us all? No, it's not possible. You need to be, bring us a, a better solution than to kill us all. We are here to stay. And we are offering all of us, not you and me, we are offering all of us to live here in peace and harmony. This area of the world can be gold. Can be gold. People that came into Israel understand it. This place is beautiful. Um, they are not going into Egypt to work. They're not going into uh, Jordan to work. They're not going anywhere to work. They're going inside Israel to work and taking money inside. So, an end, maybe if there is one, one, even one person in Gaza Strip that wants to, from, from the people in charge, that wants to make an end, sit on the table. I, I'm not a politician and I'm not a general. I, w I will use really the, the late Golda Meir sentence. I hope I will translate it good uh, from Hebrew to English. But she said, like, when the Arabs will put their guns, not the Arabs, I'm sorry to use it, it's not the Arab, it's the Palestinian, it's like the people that's living in the Gaza Strip. When, when they will put their guns down, it will be peace. But when the Israelis will put the guns down, there will be no Israel. This is the way that we live here in Israel these days. This is why it's such a big shock. Because when you put Palestinians inside of Israel to work, and I will not say it sadly, but one of my workers in my bar is a Palestinian that was working at my place. The last thing I, I had, the last conversation before this weekend was him telling me my wedding is next week. So my partners and me gave him 1,000 shekels. It's like $300, like a gift for his wedding. We are so happy for you. I'm sure 85, if not more, percent of Gaza Strip people are amazing. And we can have peace and harmony together. But their leaders, oh my God, their leaders, the people that invaded Israel on the 7th of October, Look in the internet. I will not even need to post nothing. Look, find what they did. I will not go into what Israeli army is doing now because I'm not there. I can tell you what's going on inside because I came back from this, not event, not festival, not Nova. The, the name will need to be changed. And it will be soon in the history. It's the Nova massacre by Hamas terrorists. It's like that. And the problem is not Israeli. The problem is worldwide. Sorry for getting emotional a little bit. No, I can't even begin to imagine what you've been through, as I was saying earlier. But my last question before I let you go here, what does it mean to you to see all of these pro-Israel rallies that are going on, not just there, but all over the world. We've seen them here in the U.S. We know that President Biden is going to head over there to Israel. What does all that mean for you, someone who is living there and experiencing this nightmare? Um, the friendship, you know, I used uh, a few minutes ago the, the name of uh, Golda Meir, which was uh, um, have such a strong relationship with the, with the U.S. for us. The USA is like the, the strongest uh, alliance and uh, the strongest friendship that we had since the, the beginning of uh, uh, the Israel. And what we see worldwide that the people support us or trying to understand like more with an open view. 
not um, close like you're doing that you're doing this like trying to understand what's going on it warms our heart so much in that this dark days uh, to hear the to hear president uh, biden in his last um, the last thing that he said about israel i can't, I can't really find the words we were I think most of the people were really in shock looking on the television and listening to him and wow, it, it warms our heart. Uh, so with all these supporting words and, and the action that we see, um, like quite a, what I told you in, in your last question, um, when I don't find any solution, sometimes you need like the the more mature friend or I can't really find the, the right word to say, like maybe somebody that can stand in the middle and talk to both sides and try to find a solution that can help because we're not looking to conquer Gaza. We are not looking to have 1.5 million more Palestinians inside. I really hope for the Gaza Strip to be successful for, for them and the the communication with the U.S. and from what we heard from from President Biden, you feel like you have a friend. You feel that you have somebody that can understand not only my side. I'm not only trying to sell my side. There are both two sides. And I really hope for the, for the Gaza Strip and for the Palestinian people that they will have a proper leaders that wants to have peace and quiet and not war and Let's conquer Israel. Let's uh, burn them all. This is what we saw on the 7th of, of October. This is a group that wants to burn Israeli just because we are here. This is not a solution. We are not four, five, 100 people here. We are more. Roy, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and to share your story. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for letting me let me talk. Let me put my voice. Of course. All right. Be safe out there. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everybody. I do want to take you out to this live image over Jerusalem right now. We are going to head to our first two-minute commercial break, but our coverage of Israel at war will continue on the other side. You're watching live now from Fox.